It suddenly rained heavily in the sky, and the group fell to the ground inexplicably because the rain carried the virus. As soon as the rain touches the human being, they will die immediately. The biological company finally found an antibody carrier. Rasmus showed powerful contagion, which made the entire base into chaos. His sister Simone took the opportunity to rescue him. However, this virus isolation area is being fully controlled by the company. The sister and brother are evading tracking all the time. Patrick, with superb driving skill, managed to survive the crisis again. But before they had time to rest, they were blocked by a large group of hunters at the intersection, being pointed at guns. The team could only raise their hands and wait for the hunters to take the following actions. At this time, Simon's father got out of the car behind the hunters. Despite his colleagues objecting to this behavior, Simon's father insisted on going over to talk to his daughter. He quietly gave Simon an address and said, "Please go to find this virus expert. He's most likely to eliminate the virus without harming Rasmus. If he also fails, you must kill Rasmus. Otherwise, the whole world cannot afford the result." Before he finished speaking, a gunshot rang out, and Simon's father died at the gunpoint of his female colleague. It turned out that the boss had noticed that Simon's father didn't want to hurt Rasmus anymore, and ordered a female associate to get rid of him immediately if she found something unusual. It took the siblings six years to see their father, but their father died in front of them. Rasmus became furious, and even the veins on his neck burst out. Suddenly, the soldier beside him began to convulse violently, and then fell to the ground and died. Martin seized the opportunity to grab the weapon and started to fight back. The hunter was beaten very badly. Simon and the others hurriedly jumped into the car and drove away quickly, knowing that the hunters would catch up soon. Martin let the other team members get out of the car first, while he jumped out of the vehicles after driving some distance. After finally getting rid of the chasing troops, Martin and the team discussed and decided to go to the address left by Simon's father to seek the help of the virus expert. The team was passing through an abandoned supply station on the way, and they planned to search for some supplies. But Rasmus silently came to Mira. Although his mate did not mention it, he felt something was wrong. Why were the soldiers around him infected before? Simon knew for a long time that her brother was a walking poison king, worried that the other teammates would not accept it, so she chose to hide it. Before those people were infected through contact with her younger brother, Simon felt that there was no risk of infection as long as she paid more attention. But now she is also confused and cannot figure out how those soldiers were infected. The big boss in the base headquarters of the biological company knew that Rasmus had infected several soldiers. Instead of feeling scared, he became very excited. The boss originally invented this virus. Knowing that the virus has a super adaptive ability, the boss firmly believes that one day the virus in Rasmus will become a part of the body, and he can control it like hands and feet. What he has to do now is to catch Rasmus as soon as possible. At this time, Martin was checking the map. The address given by Simon's father was not close. They needed to cross the entire strait by boat, and they had to walk for a few days after landing. One day, while walking through a jungle, they accidentally discovered a puzzle scene. What kind of tree is this? Not only was it pitch black, but there was a rotting corpse lying beside the roots of the tree. Rasmus stepped forward and looked curiously. The tree was covered with pitch black liquid, and the leaves seemed to have life. Suddenly, Simon stops Rasmus, and this tree is very strange. Don't approach it closely. The group did not want to stay any longer, so they hastened their pace and continued to move forward. It didn't take long for them to see another black tree, and two people in chemical suits stood below. The others seemed to know the black tree very well, and they told Martin not to approach it. It turned out that this tree was also infected. The team didn't expect the virus to be so powerful that it could still attach to the plant and coexist. These two people came here specially to clean up the virus. They lit the flamethrower and started to burn the black liquid. Suddenly, Rasmus felt excruciating pain, like his body was burning. Simon noticed that it might have something to do with the flames beside him. 
and quickly carried Rasmus away. After leaving the black tree, Rasmus' pain disappeared. The woman named Fi felt very strange. When she knew Rasmus had a virus in his body without any problems, she decided to bring Simon and the others to her headquarters. It looks like a vast abandoned factory on the surface, but all kinds of advanced technological equipment are in the basement. It turns out that this is a research and situation dedicated to preventing viruses. The founder, Jacob, is an excellent virus expert. Simon immediately judged that the man in front of her was the expert recommended by her father. Jacob was also very excited after learning about the situation and said he would first conduct a sampling test on Rasmus. And Martin and his party began to visit around under the guidance of the staff. A signal blocker is installed at the top of the factory building to block the detection of Apollo's drones. Solar cells and wind turbines ensure the power supply, and there are plenty of beds for rest. The organization had 80 people when it was first established, but unfortunately, there were only 12 left. Looking at the supplies piled up on the shelves, Martin felt that there would be no problem living here for the rest of his life. Jacob in the laboratory quickly produced a preliminary test result. Although the virus in Rasmus has been integrated into every part of the body, Jacob is still confident to strip it out. But multiple experiences are required before that. Although he said it was easy on the surface, he told his assistant Fi he would take some pure virus samples for antidote research. Fi knew that Rasmus could be life-threatening if he had to do a lumbar puncture. But Jacob reminded, "Don't forget that our first priority is to develop an antidote." Fi was suddenly speechless, and she had no choice but to try to convince Simone to make the other party realize the horror of the virus. To get rid of the virus, they had to try something radical and dangerous. Simone didn't think the virus was so troublesome at first, until Fi told her that Rasmus felt pain when he burned the black tree because he and the virus had formed a symbiotic state. With all infected hosts within a certain range, Simone was so disturbed that they were connected, and finally agreed to a lumbar puncture on her brother. Rasmus also knew that the operation was dangerous, and his whole body kept shaking. When everything was ready, Jacob put on a chemical protective suit, put Rasmus on the operating table, and then began extracting his spinal fluid with a needle. Rasmus couldn't help twitching with a piercing pain. But soon, Jacob discovered that something was wrong. What was just extracting from Rasmus was not spinal fluid, but a black liquid virus. At this moment, Rasmus on the hospital bed licked black smoke from his body and started spraying like a faucet. And the laboratory alarm sounded instantly. When Simon noticed something was wrong and came to the laboratory, the whole person was stunned. All the staff in the laboratory fell to the ground, and they all lost their breath. Only Rasmus, who had just woken up, was equally shocked to see the corpse all over the floor. He asked Simon across the door, "Are these people infected by me again?" Simon actually guessed the answer, but she said that Jacob accidentally knocked over the experimental sample and infected everyone. These words are not only to comfort her younger brother Rasmus, but also to tell others to avoid unwarranted accusations and alienation of her younger brother. Fi opened the disinfection nozzle, and the laboratory must be cleaned as soon as possible. After burying all the dead colleagues, Fi thought that everything was over, and several experts in the research institute had all died, and she could not continue to study the antidote to the virus by herself. But Simon decided that work couldn't stop, or the whole world would end. At this time, Simon suddenly thought that her father's computer had all the map data of the virus. Fi thought about it and said that if she got a laptop, maybe she could give it a try. Simon decided to go back to her hometown as soon as possible and bring her father's computer. She didn't need to go with so many people this time, as long as Martin accompanies her on the road. Before leaving, Simon came to Rasmus' room and told her brother his next plan: let him rest here and don't move around. But Rasmus soon realized that her sister seemed to be keeping a distance from him, and even locked the door before leaving. Rasmus vaguely guessed what Simon was afraid of, while Martin told Patrick on the rooftop, "Please protect Leah and others." 
After saying goodbye to their companions early in the next morning, Simone and Martin set out their adventure again. The two compared the map and found that Simone's hometown was not too close to here, and it would take several days. But they did not flinch at all and were always ready to deal with various crises. This is the first part of the second season.